Wildstalker is the hero talent tree for Feral and Resto Druids. I'm going to be discussing this tree based on the four kind of grading criteria that Blizzard set out in their blue post on hero talent trees. And that is, is there enough damage or healing to be significant but not overshadow the class or spec tree? Are both trees roughly balanced in PvP, Mythic Plus and Raids? Does the tree feel required due to one talent feeling mandatory? And does the tree affect your capabilities, rotation, combat focus or UI? This whole tree is, it really is the hat weaving tree and it's focused around symbiotic blooms for Resto Druid. Wild growth, regrowth and efflow will have a chance to cause symbiotic blooms, I'm guessing when they tick. And those blooms are a six second hot that can overlap. Hunt Beneath the Skies is a 5% damage and healing boost while in cat form and it buffs Moonfire and Sunfire damage by 10%. Strategic Infusion causes your periodic healing effects to have 10% increased crit chance if you've cast regrowth in the last six seconds. Wildstalker's power is a 3% rejuve buff and a 6% efflow and life bloom buff. Wildstalker's presence causes wild growth to last 20% longer. Bursting Growth causes your symbiotic blooms to proc a little AoE heal around their target when they expire. And the final capstone is just your symbiotic blooms increase your healing on affected targets by 8%. As far as the choice nodes go, Entangling Vortex causes Entangling Roots to be applied by everything hit by Ursol's Vortex or pulled in by Ursol's Vortex, which is on a choice node with Flower Walk. Using Bark Skin causes you to get a 10% more movement speed and drop a little AOE heal on the ground under your feet while Bark Skin is active. Bond with Nature is a 10% healing received buff that's permanent and it's on a choice node with Harmonious Constitution. Your regrowth healing on yourself is increased by 50%. Resilient Flourishing causes your symbiotic blooms to last two additional seconds, so that would make at eight second total, which is on a choice node with root network. Each active symbiotic bloom increases the healing of your life bloom and wild growth by 2%. And the final choice node is twin sprouts, which is just a 10% chance to proc another symbiotic bloom when you proc a symbiotic bloom. With the other choice of being able to guarantee a symbiotic bloom on your regrowth target if you NS regrowth. That's it. Unfortunately, the entire tree is just passives and frankly, what feels like fairly weak passives at that, 5% buff to healing or damage in cat form, a small buff to moonfire and sunfire, 3% rejuve buff, 6% efflow and life bloom buff, all exceedingly unimpactful. The tree has four choice nodes, which follows the pattern outlined by Blizzard that each tree would have three or four choice nodes. The interesting thing here is that it doesn't have a defensive. Uh, Blizzard stated in their blue post that each of their hero talent trees would have one, at least one defensive node. I think they think it's meant to be this one, the bond with nature or harmonious constitution. Your regrowth healing on yourself is increased by 50% or healing you receive is increased by 10%. They are not defensives. That's a throughput increase. That's just more healing on yourself, but that it isn't a defensive that allows you to take more damage. It just allows you to heal up the damage you've taken quicker. So first of all, the tree fails in not having a defensive option. Uh, second of all, this tree actually falls into pretty much the same trap and this gets the same criticism I offered to the last, the other Resto Druid tree, the Keeper of the Grove. And that is that instead of trying to tie all of these different talents into like various aspects of the Resto Druid or even cat weaving tree or style of play, They've instead just introduced one mechanic at the top in the passive and then tried to spread out fairly minor increases to that talent across the other nine talents. And it's just, uh, it doesn't seem very good or impactful, especially because I am fairly sure that this symbiotic blooms that the entire tree is built around are going to be the sort of healing that you just don't notice. Like you probably play Wildstalker and you play Resto Druid like normal and you do your cat weaving, all that kind of stuff. And because you've chosen Wild Stalker, your damage on details is, I don't know, 5% or 10% higher than it would otherwise be. And then you don't know what impact any of these talents have really had on your performance unless you open details, look at healing and you see, you know, symbiotic blooms 4% of your throughput or something. So that is quite disappointing. Criteria one, 
Is there enough damage or healing to be significant, but not overshadow the class or spec tree? I would say no, actually. Again, I'm making an assumption here that Symbiotic Blooms just isn't going to be that strong. I don't think any of these talent trees can be very strong on raw throughput. I don't imagine that like playing Wildstalker and taking all these Symbiotic Bloom talents is going to give the player like 10 or 20% throughput. I think it's going to be, like I said, one of those very minor things where you don't really know it's even happening and you have to check details to see that things are actually working. So it fails criteria one. It has to fail criteria one. If Symbiotic Blooms is actually strong and it did a lot of healing, then it would overshadow the class and spec tree. It wouldn't be balanced with the other tree. It would feel required. It would, it would fail all of the other criteria as well anyway. As for criteria two, are both of the trees roughly balanced in PvP, Mythic Plus and Raid? Probably. Uh, again, this is, like I said in the Keeper of the Grove video, this is for the wrong reasons. Yeah, they're both fairly balanced because they're both fairly bad. I think Keeper of the Grove will be better in PvP simply because the Grove Guardian aspect of the Resto Druid Toolkit is very strong in PvP. But I don't think that's the fault of these trees. I don't think these trees are imbalanced. I think that's just Grove Guardians being good in PvP. I can imagine this would be something similar. Uh, like I said, for maybe 5% HPS buff from just passively proccing some random healing that you don't notice. Criteria 3, does the tree feel required due to one talent feeling mandatory? Uh, on its face, no, but it has potential in this. Entangling Vortex. Enemies pulled into Ursol's Vortex are rooted in place for 6 seconds. I don't think, at the moment, I can't think of anything offhand that would make this talent feel mandatory but i could see it happening a ursol's vortex grip in and then a six second entangling vortex on an unlimited number of targets hit in the vortex on a 45 second cooldown i could see that being strong so there's potential for that here but on its face no does the tree affect your capabilities rotation what you focus on in combat or on your UI or what decisions you're making in combat. I would say, unfortunately, a resounding no to all of that as well here. There's nothing here that changes the way I would play Resto Druid or how cat weaving is supposed to be done. And I think that's the major problem with these sorts of passives. Just, you know, rejuve and ferocious bite and rip damage increased by 3%, 4%, 6%. Cat form damage increased by 5%. None of this changes what you do. It doesn't change what you're focused on or how you're playing or what buttons you're pressing or anything like that. Even something like strategic infusion, which I think you, an argument probably could be made that um, this would change the way you play by just pressing regrowth more often to maintain the 10% crit chance buff. But unfortunately, I think in most situations, you're either going to be pressing regrowth anyway when you actually need to heal. So strategic infusion isn't changing how you think about that or how you're going about doing that. And if there isn't anything to heal or you're not too worried about your healing throughput, you're going to be pressing damage abilities or changing position or saving mana or doing anything else instead of pressing regrowth for the buff anyway. The second major criticism I have for the tree, which is the same as the Keeper of the Grove tree, is that all of these talents are just passives. Just a percentage buff here or there or whatever, but they all either affect everything or they affect a few things but not enough to play around them. So while other healers got a bunch of talents that would like, you know, a couple of them would affect their utility or their mobility or would affect their cooldowns or their rotational abilities that would tie into many different aspects or parts of the spec as at large or as, as a whole, None of these talents do that for Resto Druid. Even Wild Growth, right? Wild Growth lasts 20% longer. It doesn't change the way I'm planning on using Wild Growth or what I can accomplish with Wild Growth. It's just a very slightly number go up talent. It was a little disappointing to see Wildstalker because one of the kind of ways I explained away how bad Keeper of the Grove is, is that it's one of the first talent hero talent trees we got. So I just assumed maybe it was like an early iteration and hopefully Blizzard would like take another pass or they've iterated upon this idea a little bit more and they're going to expand on it later in the development cycle. 
but unfortunately with the release of Wildstalker, it seems like much more of the same, but it doesn't have the excuse of being one of the first trees that they worked on. Someone said in the comments on the last video that yeah, the Keeper of the Grove tree was pretty mid, but at least it doesn't like ruin the spec. It doesn't create any like unhealthy gameplay habits or patterns or anything like that. It doesn't promote degenerate gameplay and it's not necessarily bad. And I think that's, that's true and like a fair way of thinking about it, in which case Wildstalker is just more of the same. It doesn't do anything bad for Resto Druid, it just also doesn't do anything good. It's not interesting, it's not cool, which is I guess just a little disappointing. Hopefully Blizzard will take another pass at this one. Up next will be both of the Holy Paladin hero talent trees. If you've made it this far, thank you for watching and algorithm stuff.